Hey guys, welcome back to Exploring Careers. Today we're joined by Kieran from Babcock. Thanks for joining us today, mate. No worries, thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to getting stuck into this one. So can you tell us a bit about Babcock and what it's like working in the naval shipbuilding industry? Yep, so a bit about Babcock. Um, uh, we're a global company, uh, but I'm based here in, in South Australia at Osborne. Uh, in our marine sector uh, and our core focus here uh, at Osborne is to uh, support the refurbishment and the maintenance activities uh, performed on the uh, Collins class submarines. Perfect and how did you find yourself in this role like is this something you were always interested in you know uh, when you're a bit younger did you just kind of fall into it how did that all transpire? Yeah so um, I wouldn't say it's something I, I expected myself to fall into. Um, I tried a number of different sort of career paths and I guess naturally just by sort of skill set and being inquisitive, um, I ended up in, in the position I'm in now. Um, so I'm an engineering team leader. <clears throat> so I started on the engineering path and ended up sort of gravitating towards our people management side of things and, and supporting the rest of the team. Perfect, so going all the way back, going back to high school, was there anything you did at high school that you think kind of helped develop you to where you are today or anything you particularly enjoyed doing at school that's kind of married up to what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah, when you, when you, when you paint the picture, um, I guess in that aspect, um, I was always good at maths and, and then good at physics when it came along as well. And, and naturally, when you're good at something, you tend to enjoy it more and it's something you pursue. So, um, and if you take that into where I work now, which is essentially just problem solving, um, it's it's a big reason why I'm here. Um, and the other thing is probably unrelated is I was a sports buff. So I love my PE and, and I love being in that sort of team environment. Um, and that's where I find myself uh, here again and as a part of a team. Perfect. And I've got written down here that you went to Tate and university. Is that right? And can you walk us through how, how that happened? Because most people think you either go to TAFE or university or you go straight into the workforce from school. So can you walk us through that a bit? Yeah, look, my journey was, was definitely different to sort of the traditional paths. Uh, I actually tried uh, uni first um, under a different sort of engineering degree. And at the time, it just it didn't feel right for me. I had no drive or desire to, to continue that. and. Um, my, my old man was, was in a trade background, um, so he shed a lot of light on his experiences um, in the trade, and it's something that I wanted to, to give a go myself. So I um, ended up getting an apprenticeship, uh, and from there on, uh, I realized I, went, I wanted to pursue my studies again. I had, a bit, I had that spark back, uh, and that's where I, I jumped back into the engineering space and, and finished my degree. Perfect, no, and I think that's good to know. I think it's uh, really important for people to hear that story that there's not, you know, just one appropriate path. There's, you know, a lot of different ways you can attack things. And as you said, went to uni, weren't really feeling it, did your apprenticeship and then back to TAFE. I think that's really important that people feel like you don't have to do one set thing. There's lots of different pathways available to you, lots of different options, lots of different, uh, you know, flexible options, which I think is really important. So once you finished up at TAFE and your studies, what made you choose I guess, where you are today working in the naval shipbuilding industry. Yeah, so I've always just gravitated towards sort of opportunities and early stages. I was in different industries that allowed me to travel and I guess really just identify what my, my hobbies or passions were. And I just always had this curiosity around, I guess, submarines. They're quite unique. It's a bit of a wow factor when you, when you tell people what, what you work on outside. And um, yeah, I was just always really drawn towards just the mystery around submarines and there's not a whole lot you can Google about them. So um, when an opportunity came up to get into the industry, I was, I was pretty excited. Yeah, perfect, mate. And when you were at TAFE, were you purely just, you know, learning or did you go off on any traineeships, in, internships, anything like that, or university for that matter, while you were at uni, anything that helped you prepare for this uh, or I guess the next stage of your life? Yeah, so, so after I, I, I gained the apprenticeship, um, the business at the time allowed me to go back to, to study part-time uh, for my uni degree, but then also move into the office space uh, and get some experience in sort of drafting, some other engineering type activities. 
So that's where, I guess, once again, that spark came from. I, I could see my studies get put into, uh, into action and it was just really rewarding. So I didn't do any necessarily work experience or internship, but because I worked part-time and then studied part-time, I could just apply what I was learning as I went and that just kept the ball rolling. Awesome, mate. And you're obviously at Babcock now. What was it about Babcock specifically that, that drew you to them? Was it, uh, you know, I'm sure once you got to the end of your, your studies and your journey and everything that you had a few options in front of you. So what was it about Babcock that uh, you were excited about? Yeah, look, it's, it's a big decision um, taking on a job opportunity, uh, especially when a lot, all you've got is really the internet, um, a couple of conversations and obviously the interview process. But it was the fact that Babcock are, are global, uh, quite big within Australia. Uh, they've got a number of different programs. They're working on a lot of exciting sort of um, equipment. And for me, given it was local, uh, the lifespan of, of submarines and, and everything involved, that's what really drew me into to Babcock, just their, their involvement in the, um, the Collins class submarines. Yeah, awesome. And now you've obviously mentioned uh, engineering and submarines uh, a few different times now. So what does that actually mean? Because most people, myself included, don't really have a whole lot of experience with submarines or anything like that, apart from, you know, what you see in the movies and the hunt for Red October and, and that type of stuff. So is it like what you see in the movies? Is it, you know, what are you, what are you actually doing day to day and how's that work and how would it be different from what I guess people would know or not know about, you know, submarines and the industry as a whole? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And um, it is a bit of a hush-hush sort of uh, industry for, for certain reasons. And there's not a whole lot of information out there. So all you've got is really those those movies, like you said. But uh, the reality is, um, you know, these, these submarines come in, they ultimately get chopped up all, almost into piece parts and they get sent back to uh, certain people to maintain them. So Babcock here in Osborne, we get um, a lot of the weapons side of things get sent back. Uh, every two years uh, and we refurbish it and ultimately pass back to the project manager to to install back on the submarines. So that's sort of probably a very technical response there. But um, ultimately what you see in the movies is this lovely vessel cruising through the ocean. We, we see it all chopped up in, into small pieces uh, and our job is to make sure that it's, it's fit for purpose. It's, it's good to go and, and it can go back on a submarine for another 10 years. Perfect. And is that quite a hands-on role or is it done mainly on you know computers and that type of thing uh you know how does that actually work so i'm just trying to imagine in my own head here the different parts of the submarine get shipped off to different organizations and different departments yep. and that type of stuff you guys are working on the weapons as you said or the weapon systems so how does that actually work yeah yeah so uh, like like any business there's a number of different departments that they all play the play their own sort of role so as the parts come back into, into our uh, facility, and the, I guess the first people that will touch it is the workshop. So the, the trades people, they'll take things apart. Uh, and that's really when sort of the engineering team comes in. Uh, we have people in different roles. So we've got roles that people are on, on the floor with the workshop, working alongside them, see these parts come in, like you described, hands-on. Um, and then we also have the people who um, uh, in the positions where they're doing a lot of the, the, the analysis, the, the problem solving upstairs on, on the computer. So, uh, and what we like to do in our team is make sure everyone gets um, an opportunity to do a bit of both so we can all upskill and learn um, because I think it's important to not just be stuck on a computer all day, uh, but also to get, get your hands dirty, so to speak. Perfect. And just following on from that a little bit, do you have you know, a typical nine to five, like is each day different? Are you coming in doing the same thing or is it different tasks and different challenges every day? How does that work? Yeah, look, the, the equipment that we get back every two years is virtually exactly the same, but the problems that come out of it um, due to the age of, of, I guess, the submarines and the fleet, um, the problems are always different. So uh, what, what's what's priority today or, or an issue today may not be the same one tomorrow. So it's a very, uh, fast paced moving um, environment and that's probably a big draw card for me. I, I like change, but I enjoy sort of those uh, those different issues that arise. But yeah, cool. But it must be very promising knowing that your the industry and what you're involved in has got a big future uh, you know, ahead and 
doubling in size, tripling in size, whatever it may be, a lot of new jobs coming in. That must be promising to know that you're in an industry that's got a really healthy future. Yeah, for sure. Um, I come from a couple of different backgrounds and one thing that really drew me to defence is sort of that long-term security, those long-term projects. And as you said, it, it the scope of work for the, the future submarines is massive. So um, it's not necessarily, you know, you can be on one path now and the industry is that big, you, you could end up on a different path. And, and that's, that's really exciting. And there's just so much opportunity out there yeah, awesome. No, I think that's I think that's really good, especially now so more than ever, everyone seems to be really conscious about the future of work and what the future is going to look like in different industries. So I think that would be really comforting and exciting to know that you're part of a, a really big growth industry in Australia, which is exciting. Now, back to your role, what is it about your day-to-day -day job that I guess you love the most? What is the most exciting part of your job that you just can't wait to get stuck into every day? Yeah, look, it's I'm a team leader now. I used to be a sort of a team member, and, and uh, for me, I really enjoy watching the team, the team members grow and develop the skills and capabilities. Um, it's really rewarding to, I guess, support and be a part of their journey. So um, I'm not so much on the front line on, on too much of the technical stuff anymore. Uh, so I moved to sort of the people management side of things, but. Yeah, for me, it's really seeing uh, the team grow and develop into sort of the, the careers that they want and aspire to, to be. Awesome. And I imagine, you know, working on submarines and engineering, it sounds quite complicated. Is that the most difficult part? Or is it, as you just mentioned, the, the people management and, and looking after a team and making sure everybody's happy and working towards one common goal? What's the most difficult part of the role, do you think? Uh, yeah, for me, it's it's probably been the transition from being um, on the as a team member, uh, doing all the work, and then becoming a team leader, and uh, having knowing when to delegate the work out. So yeah, it's been a big challenge because a lot of the stuff we do, is submarines, it's cool, it's exciting, you want to learn, you know, that's that's sort of where engineers thrive on. And now the position I'm in, I've got to be more focused on delegating and people managing and overseeing things. So it's been tough to me not to just grab something and run with it, um, just because it's cool and exciting. And, you know, I've got to be able to, to pass that on. Uh, and for anyone who's keen on, you know, doing something similar to you, you know, getting into STEM fields, engineering specifically, what's something they can do to stand out from the crowd, basically? Because there's always, no matter what you go into, there's always going to be other people uh, around and you know maybe applying for a similar job that, that you are or whatever it may be so what's something you, you think you can do to, to stand out if you wanted to go work for a, a Babcock or in the industry as a whole uh, do you have any advice there? Yeah look uh, one thing obviously they're going to look for is, is sort of what what studies you know, you're undertaking or willing to take but for me I, I always look for that sort of curiosity side of things uh, just being inquisitive in general and I, I'm really really big on just people being themselves. So, you know, these interviews and when you meet people, there's it's, it's pressure environment. So it, it can be difficult, but for me, what stands out is when someone's feeling, when, when you can get to know someone and their true sort of personalities and understand their true interests and work out, you know, not only are they a good fit for the business, but is this the best for that person as well? Could, you know, are they gonna be really happy and thrive here? Yeah, awesome. And, and, and going back to, I guess your education journey obviously mentioned how you did a few different things from uni to an apprenticeship and then to TAFE and everything in between. Do you think that, you know, would you recommend doing something like that? Is that each to their own? You know, is there a certain path people should or shouldn't look at taking? How did you find your experience? And I guess, would you recommend that? Or what, what would you say to people who are kind of looking at your experience? Because it is, I get, uh, I guess a bit different uh, to what a lot of people would do. So, uh, how would you how would you go about that? Yeah, look, um, it's hard to recommend it to anyone. I think it's each each that are own. Like you said, for me, I was very confused uh, coming out of high school. Uh, I was good at certain things, but I didn't know necessarily what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So. I think I dwell too much on, hey, can I do this for the rest of my life, as opposed to just giving things a go uh, and then adjusting as I went. So it worked for me. I've always been sort of curious on everything as opposed to one thing. And that's what led me from jumping to, I guess, two different types of engineering to eventually mechanical, and then also including an apprenticeship. 
Uh, for me, it was just a big part of just understanding my likes, my dislikes, and sort of my futures. So at the time, it was very frustrating because you'd see all, I guess, your, your, your friends from school and some of your colleagues finish uh, your degree or you know rise the ranks, so to speak, in their company while you're still working out what you want to do. So that can be quite hard, but in hindsight, site now um, I wouldn't change it at all I've got a lot of broader sort of experiences and seen a lot, a lot more different things I'd say but yeah yeah awesome mate. No, I love that I think that's a really great advice which kind of leads me into my next question which you kind of touched on just then is that obviously when you're at high school going through a year 9 10 11 12 whatever it may be it's a very difficult time very stressful very confusing because you're only a young person as it is, and you're being asked to make some big decisions in regards to what subjects you're gonna study, are you gonna go to uni, are you gonna go to TAFE? If so, what are you studying there? If you're not going off to further education, are you going straight to the workforce? So it's a stressful time uh, and very confusing, and you're asked at a very young age to make some big decisions about your future, which can be very stressful. Knowing what you know now and being through that whole journey, what's some advice you'd give to some to some young people who are potentially watching this today, going through, you know, maybe in year 10 or 11 as we speak. Uh, what's some advice you can give them knowing what you know now? Yeah, for sure. Like you said, it's, it's confusing, it's stressful, it's overwhelming. Um, but the thing I'd tell myself and, and if people are in the same sort of situation is the decisions you make right now aren't forever. You know, they may feel like, um, you know, whatever you choose now, you're stuck with, but that's not the case. Just give something a go, learn, learn about, obviously uh, the job, the industry, whatever it may be, but more so just learn about yourself, what you want, what you, what you don't want, and uh, what you might be interested in and, and adjust, change change accordingly. I think that's that self-awareness uh, of your own sort of um, journey, of what journey you want to take is, is probably the most important thing. Perfect, mate, I love that, it's great advice. I think when you are, you know, as you said, at a young age, going through secondary school, you can think, oh God, this is it. Whatever decisions I make now are gonna make or break my future. Uh, I've gotta make sure it's the right one. Um, and it's definitely not the case. Of course, if you make uh, decisions which end up working out well into the future, then happy days, great. But by no means is that the, the be all and end all. Um, now, last question I just wanted to leave you on for anyone who's been watching this and said, yep, this sounds great. This sounds right up my alley. What's something you want them to know, anyone watching this, about getting involved in the industry, uh, if they're kind of sitting on the fence, do I, don't I, it kind of seems like it could be for me. What's one thing you want to leave people with today? Yeah, probably similar to what I said earlier, just before, is just give it a go. Um, you know, it's hard to know whether, you know, this is the perfect industry for you. It's 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 growing, it's exciting, there's, there's a lot of moving parts and, you know, you can be stuck you could be doing engineering one day and in a few years time you might find yourself going down a different path again so the opportunities are there um, i don't see too many negatives at all um, so get out there give it a go and um, yeah hopefully I, I see some of the people uh, watching this video um, in the industry in, in years to come perfect well thank you man it's been great chatting to you great hearing about your own personal journey uh, through education and now what you're doing with babcock as well as what uh, the industry looks like at uh, you know Naval Shipbuilding College and in the shipbuilding industry in Australia. Of course, if you are keen on learning more, you can visit the Naval Shipbuilding College profile on explorecareers.com.au, which has got all the information there uh, about the different opportunities, the different uh, organisations you can work for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll leave all the relevant information below, so if you are keen. Uh, on learning more than you can head there and do your own investigation and see whether it's uh, potentially right for you. But Kieran, it's been great talking to you. Thanks so much again for jumping on today. Cheers, Mitch. Thanks, everyone.